Hey guys, I'm Eric with True Audio, and today we have Kerry Warzniak. He's been a part of True Audio since the, the beginning of True Audio. Um, he's been with us for 22 years, and recently he's been promoted to CEO, and today we just want to let you guys get to know Kerry a little bit better. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Good, good, good. This is great that we get to sit down with you, Eric, <laughs> and, and chat a little bit. All right, well, let's dive in. Um, so, sorry, how, how did you get into the, the industry? The industry, well, going into this, I was thinking, you know, usually I do these videos of, of the products and I can keep it very specific. I know the products inside and out. And now when we were talking about doing this, it's like, you want to get into my, my life. I should know a lot about it, but um, it really took me back for a minute to uh, reevaluate, um, you know, where I've been, what I'm doing, you know where I'm going and it was actually a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be to to kind of bring up some of my my past memories but um, uh, I've been in the industry for quite a long time um, obviously well before True Audio um, I started off in the early 90s uh, doing installs for a local uh, company up in Salt Lake uh, we did custom installs an electrician back then doing low voltage was kind of un, unheard of and uh, he had some vision of, of being able to have an, he had an electrical company and he wanted to get into the low voltage side of it. Um, and I had been doing some wiring for a, uh, a company that would go into an apartment complex and just uh, rewire the, the buildings. Uh, so I knew about wiring, but uh, he hired me on to uh, do the low voltage side of it, his division. I uh, did, did a lot of custom installs for about seven, eight years. Um, home theater, automation, you know, security, those type of things. Um, and in fact, we actually developed one of the first structured wiring uh, companies called Future Smart. Um, and it was a, a, a bundled wire that had a couple RG6, a couple fiber optic cables and coax cables that, again, back in the, uh, you know, mid 90s, this was really unheard of. Uh, and brought it back to a panel that uh, everything terminated to um, kind of like an electrical panel, but for low voltage, and you could patch networking cables in, uh, and it was actually a really nice system. That that um, system or that company actually was bought by uh, uh, separated, and uh, uh, and uh, was its own company that sold to other integrators across the across the country. I ended up going to work for them uh, was their training manager and I'd go out and train uh, people how to use uh, the future smart product um, how to wire mostly electricians that wanted to get into a low voltage but I would teach them you know how networking would work how coax would work and fiber optics and speakers um, and did that for a number of years uh, Honeywell ended up buying future smart uh, the product and uh, it was, uh, you know, the culture changed a little bit at that point. Um, I stayed there for about a year and uh, uh, decided that, you know, as, as good as Honeywell, and there's some, definitely some advantages of working for a big company like that, the big corporate uh, um, business wasn't for me. Um, and I'd known uh, the guy that started uh, True Audio, because um, he actually trained me when we were doing low voltage, uh, how to do, uh, Brent Howard was his name, uh, he, he trained me how to do uh, low voltage installs um, for that electrician that I worked for previously. He had started up uh, True Audio uh, and had been running it for a couple years and uh, uh, finally needed some help in the tech support area and uh, kind of running everything on the back end and he asked me to to come along and and uh, work for true audio and that's kind of where i got well that is where i got my start with true audio i was in this little uh up in west valley in salt lake in this little warehouse um i literally had an office that was made out of plywood and in the in the winter time i would have uh i had no insulation no heat i had these two floor heaters i would sit on, the, on my arms around my desk and just keep warm and I did just about everything that, you know, did returns, did tech support, managed the inventory. Um, and, uh, you know, that was 
where I got my start in Tiradio and that, you know, grew from there. I went from operations and, and luckily now, uh, you know, I was given the opportunity to, to, to be the CEO of Tiradio. That's awesome. You've, uh, you've clearly been our industry for a long time, probably longer than I've been alive, um, <laughs> which is pretty impressive. Don't age me, all right. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you enjoy about our industry? Well, I mean, what's there not to enjoy about the industry? I mean, I mean you're, you're building cool stuff that you know is going to go into houses that is really going to make, um, you know, you know, that house that much cooler. Um, uh, I, I always go back to when, when I was doing installs, you would see people go into a house, a, a brand new house, and you, they spent a lot of money on the flooring and the cabinetry and, and all that stuff. And I'm sure they enjoyed it, you know, and it was nice stuff. Um, but I, I always remember being able to uh, walk into when you finish an install and start doing that walkthrough with that customer and you turn on the home theater or your multi-room sound speakers in the room this comes alive with music um, and to see the smile on the homeowner's face uh, that yes this is what I want this is cool you know you know I, I spent all this money on on fixtures and all these th other things but this is what I'm going to show off to my friends um, and now I have the opportunity or we as a you know true audio to build stuff that really you know enhances the house and makes it uh, more of a home um, you know the I, I use my in my house every day uh, my speakers throughout my house and uh, to be able to, to sit back and come up with an idea on a on a new speaker design or a new subwoofer or something like that and and uh, make it come to life and know that that's going to enhance somebody's home. I mean, it's a great industry. That's fun. Yeah, every, every day burns something something fun. Um, and, and our industry is it, constantly evolving quickly and, and growing so fast, but I, I do feel like there are some areas that, you know, need some improvement um, but how, how do you feel like you could help improve the industry or what are some aspects of the, the industry that you feel like can be improved upon? Yeah. I mean, I think every industry, uh, has its, uh, uh, pitfalls. Um, uh, I, I think the audio industry itself, um, you know, let's, let's be honest, the technology hasn't changed all that much. When we look at an in-ceiling speaker, uh, that I used to install back in the mid '90s is not much different than the the speaker that we're that we're installing now. The the concepts are essentially the same. Um, so you know, it's it and it's not that it that uh, we've just stuck with the the, the what we have and it, we're, it's just good enough. It, it's just a good technology that that is easy. You know, it's it's solid. It works. Um, so I think that the product itself, audio itself, um, you know, is always evolving and, and, and making sure that, that the product is, you know, one of our focuses has always been, you know, a speaker is a speaker and, and uh, how do we make it easier to install? You know, it's the one thing that I, that I remember back when we first started in installations was you know, True Audio was built, I did installs, the founder, Brent Howard, did installs. Most of all of our, our salespeople that worked at, at True Audio, and even to this day, uh, came from the installation world. So it was, you know, the sound of innovation has been our, our tagline forever because, you know, we're trying to invent new products um, that are focused on the custom installer and how can we make life easier for them. Um, and we know that, you know, typically labor is their biggest expense, uh, and the faster they can get into a job, get it installed, make it work, uh, and get out of the job and it's, and it's reliable and solid. That's what we try to do. Um, and I think that's overall is, is where we focus on is, is building a good solid product, uh, um, uh, that that installers can easily install and, and save labor. Um, I think if you step back and look at the industry itself, uh, I think one of the glaring things, um, and not so much with you know audio manufacturers, but the custom installation world itself, that 
um, the whole you know Cedia and everyone has been doing a lot better job at it but uh, I think it's one industry that a lot of times uh, end users either have a really good experience or a really bad experience and one of the reasons why well the biggest reason why that is is that um, anybody can just about get into low voltage they can get into it oh look i installed the home theater in my dad's house or my house or i used to do car audio i can go out and, and and do a business i know i know audio and yeah if you know audio that that's one thing you 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 know audio but anybody that opens up a company knows that you need to know more than just how to uh install audio uh, there is aspects to a you know business and uh, running a business, and I think that's one thing. Ever since we started uh, this industry back in the early '90s to now, is that you know a lot of traits like a plumber, an electrician, uh, HVAC, they have tech schools. They have that teach them, you know, the basics, the technical stuff behind you know how to install and even business business management management side of it but in our industry you know there is no tech school there's no licensing there's no you know uh, certificates that you need to be able to go out and do that uh, there might be in a few states cities here and there but in general if you want to be a low voltage installer AV installer open up you know go pay start a business and, and you're good to go and I think we see a lot of turnover uh, and it puts a lot of bad taste in a lot of people's uh, homeowners mouth when they go through someone that was that we like to call trunk slammer that was there you know one day couldn't survive and now they're gone and now they're scrambling trying to figure out how are they gonna you know, fix their system if we had some more regulations and more certifications and more licensing uh, for the industry as a whole I think we would see, you know, a better image of uh, the AV industry as a as a whole. I I 100% agree with you. Um, thank you for telling us a little bit more about professional carry. Now, uh, you know, I've I've known you for a long time, and you know, I'd like to get a little bit more more personal with you. And like, what what kind of hobbies or what do you enjoy doing outside of outside of audio and work well i guess probably the one thing that i'm i'm known for is i, I do quite a bit of endurance sports uh i do marathons uh i do iron man triathlons uh and uh you know it's it's one of those things that i that i enjoy as a hobby uh obviously my family is is very important to me um i think anybody that knows knows me that uh, that's always uh uh, a very high priority in me but as far as hobbies and what I do do is is really you know I run a lot I bike a lot um, swim uh, and I know you know I when we were talking about doing this you know is is the, the whole transition of you know does that help you as a as you know running a company and and I think that that's you know something I had to sit back and look at and go you know you know it, I, I really believe it is um, something that, you know, I'm not a guy that gets up in the morning. I'm not one of those guys that uh, that I, I live to run and I live to go ride a bike. Do I enjoy it? And once I get out there, yes. Is it a battle for me to get up every morning and get up early and strap my shoes on and get out the front door? Absolutely. Um, but I do know that it's consistency Consist consistency is is the key of the game i always tell everybody that's getting into it is uh don't worry about mileage um the the thing you want to do if you don't want to run go out and run a half a mile and come back at least you've done something it's that consistency of getting out there and, and doing something and i think that's what's helped me with training uh long distance uh endurance uh races is in relating it back to the company is um is consistency uh i know nothing comes easy for me at, at uh at, at you know at work you know i have to dive into it i get overwhelmed but i know consistency just chipping away and that goes back to what i i always promote to everybody is you know the one percent um 
don't overwhelm yourself with with I've got a, a marathon or an Ironman. There's a lot that goes into that. A, a lot that goes into your job of, of running a company and making sales and run, running the warehouse. There are a lot of different things that go into that. And if you look at the big picture, we all have improvements to do. Um, you have to break it down into small little segments that you can you can manage. Just like I run a little bit, I ride a little bit, I swim a little bit, and at my work, I look at the P&L and I look at product development and I look at little pieces. And some days I, I do really great in both aspects. Uh, some days I mop. Um, but what I tell everybody is if you're if you're making small improvements every day, whether it's one percent, two percent, or if, even if it's a half percent, it doesn't matter. Um, don't overwhelm yourself with the with the big picture of everything and just chip away and be consistent. I love that, and and I'm glad you brought up the one percent. Um, I think that's something that's really resonated with me since you've become the CEO and and. That's one thing that you've really pushed to to instill in in all of the employees at, at True Audio, um, and so along those lines, when you be, became CEO about a year ago, um, congratulations by the way. Um, what was one of the first things that you wanted to implement um, for culture or for the brand in general? Yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting time. You know, you were there. Um, I think uh, uh, I had some time to reflect about it and and decide how I want. Not that the True Audio was ran terribly. It was ran different than I than I would want it to, uh, wanted it to be. Uh, I wanted my personality uh, stamped on, on on True Audio, um, and uh, uh, I learned a lot from 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 Brian and and uh, still learning a lot from him but I, I think I wanted to make sure one thing I, I sat down with you and I sat down with Trevor and I remember having that conversation was uh, I want to make sure that first of all we change the internal um, uh, environment and culture and there were a lot of steps that went into that but before we even, you know, we had, you know, customers that were saying this and that and outside businesses that were, that were, you know, you know, coming and, and taking and, and, and saying things about us. But, but we, we put the outside stuff away and I felt like we needed to focus on us as a company internally. Um, and once we did that, we changed the culture and the mindset of who we are and what we are. Um, that would emanate to our um, our customers. Um, so we focused on, you know, first of all, I wanted to make sure that every employee uh, felt like they were an asset and not a liability, um, that they were a part of this company. I'm a big a big uh, proponent um, of you know making sure that that everybody in this company has a part and they're not any better they're someone's not higher better uh that we're all equal and we all have a part to do and we can't do it without every person in this in this company so it was very important to me to make sure that uh, as much as possible every felt like they were on a, a, an equal playing field yes some people get paid more than others some have bigger titles than others but without the warehouse, without the tech team, without the sales team, without the marketing team, they all pay a play a critical critical part in making True Audio run the way it is. Um, so that was one thing we wanted to change. I felt like we also needed to have a mission. Uh, we wanted to have a vision and some values that we put in place uh, that I felt like really gave gave the company, okay, this is who we are and this is what we're trying to do. Uh, that was a long time coming. I know I heard a lot uh, of people, you know, ask, uh, you know, where are we going? What are we doing? Um, and that was, um, you know, something I felt was very important uh, so that everybody knew, you know, who is True Audio and what are we trying to accomplish? So, you know, that was another aspect. Uh, another big uh, thing that I, I, I really focus all of our employees on is keeping a, a, a very balanced life and what I mean by that is um, 
you really have your personal life and you have your work life. Um, and it's very easy for these to get out of sync. Uh, a lot of cases, work life goes, you know, skyrocket. It, it's, you focus on it and you have to do it. And what suffers is your personal life. And um, there are, you know, I, I understand that there are times that that happens and that, that, that it's just a necessity. But at the end of the day, you know that it's temporary. Um, and that you can bring those two uh, lives together and they can live together and harm in harmony um, as long as you're aware and that one isn't dominating over the other. I, I, I always promote to everybody in our, in our company that you have a life outside of this. I don't expect, you know, things come up and you have to take care of your family, you have to take care of your life outside of, of work. Um, I appreciate everybody that works here. Um, I think that they, um, uh, for the most part, as far as I know, they enjoy coming to work. And um, that is, you know, more important to me. And I tell, you know, I've, I've talked to every employee that I know you may not be here 21 years like I, I've been here. That's fine. I don't expect anybody. You, maybe you'll be here 22 days. Maybe you'll be here two years. Whatever whatever it works out for you that's fine what i want is somebody when they leave here they leave here with a good experience they've learned something they've learned taken something away from their life in either whether it be personal or or um, business that they've come away from this company a better and more aware open healthier person when they walk away and that's you know the whole culture of inside the the company is really where i wanted to to make sure that people were healthy on both aspects and they knew the expectation wasn't that it was 100 percent work what your life is your life and you know you have a life outside of this and that's important too yeah and and we you know as an employee you know we feel all of that and and it's it's been a good good change of pace for us and, and we, we really appreciate everything that you've done so far. Um, the next thing, so legacy is, is it's become kind of a, a big popular word now. Um, and you know, I want to know what, what type of legacy do you want to leave personally and professionally? Um, wh where do you, I mean, what, what would your goal be? Well, I mean, I think I covered a little bit in that first question. I think my legacy is is creating a balanced uh, company that 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 understands there is more to the just doing work. Um, uh, we and we know we need to do work and we need to make this this machine work. We're all trying to make money, um, and that's obviously very important. But my legacy is that I want everybody to feel like they're a part of this machine and that they are they have a part to play in this machine um, and they are important uh, and uh, I, I truly feel like my legacy would be to to leave that lasting impression that they walk away from here with a good taste in their mouth they learn something and um, the whole idea of true audio itself was you know, you know, when we, again, when I kind of go back to being brought in to CEO was, uh, you can say we kind of lost our, our uh, way a little bit. We had some other focuses that we were, we were going toward that we felt like at the time were, were good opportunities. Um, and when I brought in, was brought in, um, I really wanted to bring us back into where we came from, or what we like to call our, our roots, and that is our CI line, our custom install line, um, and focus on those guys. Um, we've been known forever. That's who we are. Uh, we build good products at a you know that sound good, that have great features on them, um, and that's the legacy I want to make. Uh, from the the outside is good, solid, custom. Uh, installer design products but internally a a good culture a healthy culture for employees to work in perfect 
All right. Well, I think, uh, I mean, it's, we appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with us, letting everyone kind of get to know you a little bit better. Um, just to wrap things up, uh, kind of a fun question that we like to ask everyone. Um, what are your top five songs on, on your playlist right now? <laughs> I knew this one was coming, uh, and I was uh, scrambling looking at uh, my Spotify list um, uh, to, to kind of get an idea. Um, I'm kind of all over the place, and it depends on uh, what I'm trying to accomplish. I mean, I have a, I have a playlist of... Uh, you know, female vocal vocalists that I like to listen to if I'm looking, listen, trying to listen to for a, a particular uh, trait in a speaker. If we're testing the subwoofer, I got another playlist for that. Um, and there's some songs there for mid-range that I like to use. Uh, you know, I, I'm one of those guys, I, I, you know, and I even went through my, my, my top played songs. I'm all over it. As long as it's not country. Uh, I was just going to ask how you feel about country. <laughs> that's about the only uh, type of songs I, I will not listen. I'm a, I'm a guy that's from the 80s, uh, new wave type music, you know, Depeche Mode, uh, U2. Uh, that, you know, that's where my heart is always uh, if I'm just listening to music. But uh, I have specific playlists uh, that I use for specific testing and, and listening, trying to figure out how a speaker sounds like. Well, we'll, we'll keep working on the countryside because we'll get you there. <laughs> we'll get you there when you grow up. Um, but I think that's it. Uh, thanks again for stopping by. And um, let's carry words in. Thank you. <laughs>